Hello friends Hey And welcome to what is probably the most nerve-wracking morning of our lives uh, It's our last day in Iran and today we're gonna cross what's one of the most dangerous borders in the world And if everything goes as planned, how long will it take us? It should take us about three to five days It's been seven days and nobody tells us when it's gonna stop, we're gonna get no information, nobody speaks English. We are prisoners, we are not guests in this country anymore. Unless you arrest me. No, you, no. But then you got no right to take me away from here. As you just saw, not everything in this journey went as planned. But like Liz always says, it's either a good time or a good story and, and this was definitely not a good time. So definitely we have a good story for you today. A story of how we lived and slept next to prisoners. A story of how we felt like zoo animals. An adventure that concluded with us escaping Pakistani police. But for all of this to make sense, let's go back to the damn day when it all started. Let's go. I let's, feel anxious. Yes, let's go. Let's get it over with. <laughs> Our journey towards the world's craziest border crossing started in an Iranian town called Zahera. And only minutes into the drive, we started feeling the tension. About 80 kilometers from the border and first checkpoint passed. 50 kilometers from the border, second check. Let's just say there was much more police vehicles on a road than there were regular cars. Since my platter doesn't handle stress too well, we stopped for a pee break and yet another surprise. We are 20 kilometers from the border and uh, on the field there's a sign about landmines. I would go closer but I'd rather not. Yeah, the air was thick with tension and I think it's been years since anyone in this area has smiled. 10 kilometers from the border, last checkpoint, they looked into the van. Once we got to the border, we were quite nervous. We had hundreds of gigabytes of filmed videos on a hard drive. If found, would have definitely landed us in Iranian prison. And if you think it sounds like over-exaggeration, then I doubt it. We have already received death threats for posting videos that criticize the government. Honestly, you can see them yourself. Luckily, the border was easier than we thought. Our passports were checked about five and the car only two times. The only weird thing was an hour long interview with a secret service agent. I'm pretty sure it's the only time in my life when I have told somebody that I have no friends. We did it because we didn't want to jeopardize the safety of our Iranian friends. We were just interviewed, all of our social medias, our families, our jobs, everything about us, our fingerprints was put to system. But now we're in the line and hopefully we get to, get to move soon. And then finally, the magical green I can't believe how happy I am to see that green, green and white gate. The blissful moment we had been dreaming of. I want to cry. It feels like heaven, like the gates of heaven. And I'm sure it was even more meaningful for Lisa. Yes. We are in Pakistan. Whee! Because after 40 days of Iran, she could finally remove her headscarf without being afraid. So happy to finally be in Pakistan. And it's time to take this one off. Freedom. Yet short was our feeling of bliss. And we soon realized that this border crossing for us was far from over. We are not going back. It was going to be much harder than we had expected. To give you a little bit of context, the western part of Pakistan is called Baluchistan. And although Baluchi people we had met so far were kind and loving, then due to the fact that it's right next to Afghanistan, 50 kilometers that way is Afghanistan. And over the last 10 years, there have been a few kidnappings. This whole area, half of Pakistan, is deemed dangerous for tourists. And this meant that for the next 1200 kilometers, we could only move 
with a police escort and only stay behind closed doors and constant surveillance in police stations. First of such police stations was right next to the border and as we found out they don't escort tourists every day. So for the next two days we stayed right there next to the border. Luckily we had everything we need for a good life in our van. I guess the only thing we did not get used to was the prison cell right next to our door. So that's kind of unusual. It was at least as interesting for the prisoners to see some weird Europeans living in their van right next to their cell. There was also one positive thing about staying in that police station and it was that we once again run into our German friend we had met in Iran. Larus has been traveling on his bicycle for the last nine months and if any of you is thinking that traveling this part of the world in our van is crazy, then as you see, there are people much crazier than us. <laughs> and don't worry, there will be much more of him in this video. After two more days in this station, it was finally time to start our adventure. All the levies are taking the last photo with Lisa's Paluchi dress. <laughs> we loaded Larus's bike on an escort and the excitement was in there. And the road trip begins! Yay! Oh, and I'm quite ashamed to admit, but it took me a good half an hour to realize that the traffic in Pakistan works the other way around. Is Pakistan left side traffic? Next stop, a new police station. We had tea with the officers and I must admit, it all felt quite exciting. When we started the next leg of our journey, they asked Lizu and Larus to the police car. Turns out it was simply so that they could take selfies with Lizu. But let's just say, I was not complaining. Mama, 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 mia, mama, mama, just killed a man. Waterloo, na 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 na. By the end of this day, we had changed escorts at least five times. In one of such places, Lisa was greeted by a cute kid. At the other, we had tea. But one thing always stayed the same. Wherever we stopped, there was suddenly a bunch of locals staring at us. I can only imagine that this is how zoo animals feel day after day. But for once, it was really quite interesting. Our day ended in another police station. Say no to drugs. I will always remember this one as the evening when we got fed by Pakistani prisoners. The, the guys inside the cell just gave us dates. It's a little bit weird because I guess usually other people bring them stuff, but still pretty cool. By fourth morning, we had realized that things here in Baluchistan work a little differently. This morning I asked, where can I put my trash? And they're like, put it here. Felt really bad to throw in the trash on the ground, but when I said I'll put it back in a car, they took it away from my hand. <laughs> Just shows the culture a little bit, it's different. This region is actually one of the poorest parts of the country. But once you get over the first shock, you start to see the beauty of it. And although the locals don't have many possessions, they still smile a lot. Soon we also found out that even our presence in their home seemed to bring them joy. Hello. It was really a good way to pass time on otherwise tedious drive. <laughs> but there was one thing that they wanted even more. And this was selfies. Selfies with their guns. Selfies with our van. And well, even selfies with tractors. <laughs> By the way, this was just a random tractor and did yeah. not even belong to the guy. But wherever we went, we saw the kindness and humanity of those people. For us, it meant more cups of tea than we could count. While we were waiting uh, in one of the police stations, they actually brought us bread and uh, lunch. Sheep stomach and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like inside of a sheep. Nope. I'm still grateful that they thought about us. 
how much of this should we eat that it wouldn't be impolite to give it back. It's the kindness was also towards their own people. For example, when our escort picked up hitchhikers with a big piece of wood. Think about it. Would police in your country do the same? By the end of fourth day, and about 15 police changes later, we were finally closing in on our first big city, Quetta, the capital of Baluchistan province. But as it turns out, not every police station had a car, and suddenly they ordered Laros to continue on his bike. It was a hell of a ride, driving between colorful Pakistani trucks, with Laros <laughs> holding on for his life. Was it safe? Hell no! But we had to move fast, to make it to Quetta before the sunset, because driving in this traffic was bad enough, and in darkness it would be even more dangerous. Once we got to the city, we witnessed something that I thought was only real in 30-year-old comedy shows. So this rickshaw here, he was parked in the middle of the road. I couldn't grab the camera, but our police officer jumped out of the car and actually gave him a beating. Like he hit him a few times and then the guy started moving. That was the craziest thing I've ever seen. But I guess this too is just the part of local culture. After another 30 minutes of driving, we had finally made it to the police station of Quetta. Once again, as context, why we needed to get to this city was to get the permit that would allow us to actually be in Baluchistan. Yes, I know we had already spent four days here, but as you've probably already understood, some things here are just a bit um, strange. And well, Quetta had the only office to attain this permit. Oh. And of course, believe it or not, next day, this office was closed. Which meant for us another day in paradise, surrounded with barbed wire. By the way, for the coming days, we actually invited Laros to live with us in a van. They wanted to send him off to a hotel, but he was truly a fun companion. And we didn't want him to break his budget, as he usually sleeps in a tent. On the fifth day, we got a really, really bad surprise. A filmmaker's nightmare. Our microphone stopped working. So bear with me as I narrate you through the day. And if you really want, you can imagine a constant honking of car horns and the ticking of tuk-tuk engines. Because this is how the city sounds. Okay, but honestly, fifth day was when the reality started hitting us. I remember having a monologue here talking how it's only been five days, but I'm already feeling empty inside. Guys, being a prisoner sucks. Stay out of trouble. But there was also positive things during that day. We met locals that of course, again, offered us tea, but also shared with us their stories. How does it feel like living in this part of the world? Oh yeah, we saw some goats. And believe it or not, they were not there to check out the truck, but just wanted to escape the rain. And then, we got escorted to the heart of Quetta and had a chance to do our shopping with the armed security. This part was actually really fun. Just look at the smiles on our faces. After five days, we could communicate with people other than police. And if you think that we were the only ones being excited, wrong. On the city streets, more than 50 locals gathered to see us. I guess this is what happens if you ban tourists from the area. They become like a miracle and everybody wants to see them. In the evening we proved once again that three people can live on six square meters. And also made a game plan, hoping that the next day would be the last. Sixth day started out well. We got our papers in order and also received a document that stated how we would be escorted until Balochistan border. Quickly we got on the road and started putting miles behind us. Although the landscape around us was beautiful, there was just one thing on our mind. Freedom. But, of course, 
things just couldn't go as planned. At one of the stations, the escort had forgotten us and we had to wait for an hour. At the other one, there was no proper vehicle. Until, of course, there was no vehicle at all. Well, then we loaded the bike on the back and took a guy with a big automatic weapon next to us into the van. Not that the weapon itself wasn't enough. These guys themselves were the next level. One of them asked for music and when we said that the radio was broken, he started singing himself. Next one asked for a comb to fix his hair. Well, do I really look like someone who owns a comb? But to top it all off, there was a guy who ordered Lizu to go and sit in the back just because she's a woman. And this guy tried to send Lizu back uh, to sit on the bed because she's a woman. Did I get super angry? Yes, I did. I am not worth less than men. Thank you. I guess it's the first time in my life when I wanted to hit a police officer. And this is the only part of the local culture that I am never willing to accept. But sadly, this day was far from over. By sunset, we had made it to a small village and some why stopped. Of course, once again, locals gathered to examine us. This is the camera? Yes. <laughs> so many people here and they are so excited. <laughs> Suddenly, we got orders to turn back. We were not happy, but complied. After driving back for almost 100 kilometers, we had had enough. So we just stopped in the middle of the road and we refused to drive anymore. We were pissed and were not afraid to show it. The situation ended with our poor escort begging us to move just a little bit more and found us a closest police station where we could spend the night. He was really panicking in the end. Oh, just look at him, running with a gun half the size of him. And I truly feel bad. He was not to blame. He just followed orders and could not explain anything to us because of the language barrier. Seventh day started early and there was no more patience left inside of us. We were strict and turns out demanding things was the only way to make them happen. The people around us started moving faster and we got to grow faster as well. After about five more police changes, some extremely beautiful roads, and we were there, border of Balochistan. Yet only minutes later, we realized that the police were still with us and the escort didn't then. Every next officer kept on telling us 20 more kilometers, 15 more minutes. And this kept happening for hours until we couldn't take it no more. The moment that got us happened when hour before sunset, our guides wanted to turn the other way. It's been seven days and nobody tells us when it's gonna stop. We're gonna get no information, nobody speaks English. And that's when things escalated. We are not coming to the city. We are not going back. Because it happened yesterday. We drove four hours. Four they hours. They turned us around. We refused to move and showed them the document stating that the escort is only until the border that we crossed hours ago. We told them that they treat us like prisoners and not their guests. But nothing worked. We have been escorted for seven days. We were told it's gonna be three to five days. It's been seven days. Every promise has been broken. It's enough. No, sir. No, thank you. Sir, thank no. you for your offer, but we are starting our car and we are leaving right now. I, I just have to add that at least once again, the locals got a good show out of it. We had had enough. We kindly stated that their orders were not acceptable for us. And few moments later, I am not sure if we're gonna get in trouble now, but we just told the police officers not no more. We're leaving, we're not staying with them anymore. It was the first time in my life opposing strict police orders. And moreover, hitting the gas and escaping. While there was two men next to a van with big automatic weapons, my legs were shaking, but it had been done. We escaped the police to once again be free. And about half an hour later, we had made it to the promised motorway, a place 
which is deemed safe by the police. And there, we also spent the night. <laughs> we have made it to the motorway. That's the place where the escort was supposed to end. <laughs> well, now I just have to find a place to sleep and I'll tell you a bit more tomorrow when there's better light. Well, my friends, we are free. We actually escaped the police escort yesterday. I hope, I really do hope that the story ends with this. And I guess this is the sound of freedom. A tractor working next to a van in the morning early, early on. Um, next time we will continue our journey from Pakistan from one of the craziest cities in the world, Islamabad. I don't think it's a tourist attraction. Hope you guys will join us and we'll see you next time. Bye.